You got to me. I think maybe you got to get to a place where you don't care about money. Where it's not your main. I mean, it's important, but it's not the main energy anymore. Yeah. No, I know people like that. I know a guy, 50 something years old, and, uh, you know, he did related jobs, jobs related to writing and directing. You know, got to the top, was a DP for, you know, major filmmakers that are making movies right now. He could be working on one right now, but mm -hmm. he's making, made plenty of money, you know, never really was at a loss for money, you know. But um, he's bitter, you know, he's upset. That, uh, Why? Because he assumed that if he did a job related, yeah, that if he paid his dues and worked up the ladder and did a job related to what he wanted to do, that eventually uh, he would just fall into it and uh, it didn't happen. So I don't know, you know, what, no one can say what decision he could have made to change that, but uh, yeah, obviously just taking jobs close to what you want to do isn't necessarily going to going to get you there. Yeah. I feel like if you really want to create, you'll paint and create wherever you are. I mean, like painting on my bed. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, they got to go back to school and get certain classes before they can do their art. Before they can totally express themselves. I'm saying just get in there and connect with the divine and do it and see what happens. Like when we get in the way and say, oh, I don't have enough money, I'm going to do this. Who's going to buy it? Who wants it? All that little stuff that goes on. I remember when I ran out of art supply, ran out of paper. I said, yeah, I still want to continue to paint and create, but I'm out of art. I don't have any more paper. And once again, the universe provides. Someone said, hey, I got a friend that has paper she wants to get rid of. And so I'm thinking it's just like little small pieces of paper. I get over there, she has like a thousand dollars worth of art supply paper on a roll, like six feet tall about this wide and it lasts me like five years this paper so five, god gave you a five yeah. year supply of art paper yes i mean expensive art paper too like 300 pound paper which you had to pay almost like 15 dollars a sheet if you bought it separately yeah it was so cool you should see me trying to get that paper in here i dragged it i got it in here good fortune of uh of of the occurrence that uh, Ang Lee spoke or was due to speak to our class and uh, it happened when I asked were the questions that were smart for me yeah which okay. were how the hell did you get through the phase that I'm in now basically you know how did you get from I went to film school now I'm a filmmaker because there's a gap you know? yeah and, and what he said to me in particular one thing really stuck with me and that was that you know don't go be a PA yeah and, and what he said to me in particular one thing really stuck with me and that was that you know, don't go be a PA, a production assistant. Don't go get jobs in the film industry. Unless, you know, unless you want to work one of those jobs. But if you want to write and direct, you need to just sit down and think of ideas and then go make them. Like, that's it, you know. And, and people will help you make them. Qualified people who, who know how to do the jobs. Uh, just because you know how to do something doesn't mean you should. That's another thing, I guess, that I took out of it. But... Um, but yeah, that, that I mean, he had this me. analogy that really helped me realize that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's the energy that goes into the painting, the love. And see, I, I struggle with, oh, it's not perfect. It's not looking exactly the way I, I think it's supposed to look. And so that really kind of broke down that insecurity that, I, yeah, I can do this. If I just get out the way and trust that I can paint the perfect painting for this person, and it's not doesn't have to look a certain way, but it's it's the energy that goes into it that makes it that gives it the life. So I had to, you know, let go of perfectionism and thinking it had to be a certain way. And that that's part of this journey too. The mysterious fantasies of the mind, psychic content, whose power rises from the dark depths of the unconscious psyche.
everything around me became suddenly unreal, as if in a dream. And I'm saying, why am I painting? I mean, if I'm not, if I can't show it anywhere, I mean, I don't have room to keep painting and putting them in my garage. You know, what's the purpose of me painting? I get that way too. But I still continue to paint. You know, if I don't have anywhere to show it. Why? Because it must be expressed. <laughs> it's gotta come out. What do you mean? That means locked up. I mean, I can't take it with me. I mean, it's like my splendor is locked up inside of me if I don't express it. Does that make sense? Your splendor? Splendor. Splendor. Mm hmm. Yeah, the splendor has to be released, unleashed, and. Yeah. I'm not just painting just for me. I'm painting for something else, for someone else. Someone else is supposed to have this painting. So once I go through the process, it's finished, it's like it's not. For me anymore. It's for me to give or pass on to the person who's supposed to have it. And that's happened several times. Where I did a painting for a friend of mine and I gifted it to her. It was an image of a woman sitting behind mountains and gave it to her. She framed it. She put it above her computer. She said, That's me up there. I want to live around mountains. So I said, Okay. So I hadn't seen her for a year or so. And she walks in to where I was working. I said, where have you been? She says, oh, I'm living in Colorado around mountains. So that painting actually manifested. Exactly. The spirit was like working through you. Yeah. To, to help communicate that to her. Right. And I had no idea. It was just like I painted the painting, did it. She was supposed to have it. And that's where she ended up living, Colorado. Sent me a postcard with mountains. I really thought, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm just an instrument, you know, and it comes through me and I'm just creating this thing. It's like we're a co creation. What do you mean? Like we work together. It's like they're helping me and I'm the instrument to help get it out there, so we're a co creation. It's like I know I don't paint it all by myself. Like I don't take credit for any of it. When people say, "Oh, that's so great," it's like, yeah, but I know I didn't do it all by myself. They had, you know, a higher wisdom helping me. I know that for sure. Because the way I got on my path, it's like so I know there's an infinite wisdom that helps me paint. Yeah. I started studying. I read across a, a spiritual teacher called Goldsmith. Joel Goldsmith, and he teaches about sourcing God all the time for everything, all the way down to the bread that you eat. I mean, everything is totally by God's grace that you don't go to the world asking for anything. And just reading that and then practicing, you know, the principles that he taught to totally rely on God. Well. Like for instance, if you get down and you have no food and no money for gas or instead of freaking out, it's like, where can I go and get it, make this happen? It's like, how can I use my will to create food or gasoline? And But it's totally relying on source. God, the infinite. Yeah. It's like just trusting that it's, it's going to happen. There was one time as an artist, because you know, it, it is true, artists do run out of money, <laughs> and we do run out of food. <laughs> and so there was one incident when I had just moved in here, and I feel like I just had enough to pay my rent and did not have a whole lot left, left over. But I ran out of food, and all of a sudden, I feel guided to sing. I can't remember the song I sung, but I started singing this song. And the more I sung this song, 
And this is, I was out food now, and I'm hungry, and I'm singing a song. I'm getting, you know, guys, guys sing a song. I'm getting happier and happier as I sing a song. And I guess about 20 minutes later, I get a phone call from a friend that had just got back from a restaurant. And she said, hey, I have this food left over. We have too much. <laughs> Do you want some? <laughs> so, I mean, the food just showed up. But I had to stay in that place of trust, uh, joy, you know. So the singing kept my vibrations up instead of focusing on not having the food, but focusing on, you know, joy and, and that vibration of trusting. And so that singing helped do that. And it brought, you know, when that happened, I thought, wow, that's phenomenal. That really works. Yeah. So things like that. Almost like there's always a way. So if there's always a way, then what's the, what's the main thing we're supposed to do? Get out of the way. <laughs> we're supposed to get out of the way. <laughs> and let the way of the wisdom guide us. That's the main thing. What do you mean, get out of the way? Get out of the way with our thoughts, with our conditioning, with our worry, our doubt, our insecurities, our fear. Basically, our fear. And just trust what we cannot control. Really, just trust what we can't really see, but just knowing that something is happening. Sometimes if we get in the way, we block the flow. And we definitely block it.
music, it really takes me out of my body and makes me feel like nothing else matters beyond each note that passes. I used to be very frightened of the ocean. I never got too deep because you could never see what was below your feet. The pollution was always so bad. But once when I visited the Caymans and and got to see what the ocean looked like for once beyond what was on the bottom of the ocean, I could, I really loved it. And it's just so cool and refreshing. I've been to, to England and to France and to Japan. I really quite enjoyed Auvers, Auvers it was. It's a beautiful small town where roses grow out of the cracks and the sidewalks and people even though they know that you're just some dumb foreign American wandering their streets, they still come out of their houses and ask you how you are and where you're from and treat you so kindly. It's almost like you could just die there, but it really wouldn't matter because you were so happy to begin with. I could see myself there for years, definitely. And in Japan, Once you got outside those cities, just the beautiful green mountains with clouds flowing through them. It's like no- nothing anywhere else. Next life? Oh, no, no. Not another next life. Oh, I always, I always joke saying I'd rather, rather be a cat. A house cat. But my next life... Maybe a pigeon. Probably, probably a pigeon. Wandering around the cities. Just looking so blank and so happy and content. Well, what do I think of? What do I think of my own my own band? What? Well, I have to say yes, I enjoy listening to my own music, so I sometimes forget that I it's actually glimpse of what I want to say about the world.